Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So today we're going to have another one of those interesting videos. And this is only because we got some very cool like conversation going on the yesterday's video. So for those of you that are out of the loop, yesterday I did a video recommending some hair systems that are really good. Uh, we talked about like Ornitrix and we talked about, um, of course, uh, XGen. Um, Jetty is another one and uh, the new, new release for um, Blender 3.3, which is the Curb system. So um, let me jump here real quick to read some of the comments because there were a couple of things that were pretty, pretty cool. And uh, one of the questions was this one. Akuma was asking about like, the portfolio about getting into school. I'll talk about that in another video, my friend, but we will talk about that. And um, right over here, like I know my, <laughs> I know my crew, I know uh, the guys who usually reply and they were like discussing which one is better, whether Maya or Blender, 3D Studio Max, Houdini, Cinema 4D, blah, blah, blah. blah. So um, the way I see it is, and, and we've talked about this before, right? There's, there's three main things, three main things or three main like uh, the ways in which you can get into the industry. Let me just let me change this real quick. The not path now is very weird. Oh, it's a little bit better. There we go. So um, you can look for a job at the studio. You can freelance or you can be an entrepreneur and create your own stuff. Those, I would say, are the three main things. In all of them, you're going to have clients. That's something that's going to be universal for all of this. But if you're like watching this video and like, like just thinking about like, where should I start? Well, if your main goal is to work at a studio and you have a very specific studio in mind, then my best answer is go for the like the popular, the popular 3D software. OK. And you're gonna like hear pretty much three softwares, I would say, in regards to uh, studio workflows. Maya, Houdini, it's another one. And uh, I probably will have a 3D Studio Max on this one. Those are usually the, the main like pipelines that you're gonna see as studios, especially entertainment studios are looking for. Um, I've heard some people looking for um, other kinds of positions, but again, it's it, it will depend on the kind of studio. But again, if you're going for a big AAA studio, you're probably going to be landing on one of these three ones right here. And in my personal experience, the most like the easiest one to get to and a uh, very good way to start your 3D career is, of course, Maya. The problem with Maya, and we talked about this in other video, is the fact that it's uh, it could be pricey. I don't consider it to be pricey, especially for indie licenses. I don't consider it to be pricey. Um, but it's a really, really good software. There was a really good point on one of the comments here. And someone was mentioning that for the modeling department, like if you're going to be modeling, sculpting and doing stuff like that, texturing UVs, it really doesn't matter as much. You can pretty much work on any software, but once you jump into the next part of the production pipeline, it is very important that you know that usually usually rigging and animation is done in Maya because it has better tools. However, again, you can do a lot of things in other softwares as well. Um, I was recently hired to work for a commercial. Um, I can't like <laughs> give en enough information right now, but I can tell you guys that it was a really interesting experience because um, the initial assets that I had to work with were in Blender. So I, I used Blender. And then the rigging and the animation was going to be done entirely on Unreal Engine, like everything. Because nowadays with Unreal Engine 5, you can actually rig and set up controllers inside of Unreal Engine for your character. So it was quite of a, an interesting view. And, and that, again, it kind of like democratizes the whole pipeline. And you don't, you no longer have to do everything inside of Maya like for games in this case. So again, if your goal, if you're, if you're just beginning your 3D journey and you want to learn 3D, my best advice is pick any of this three right here. And we do have uh, courses for Maya. I did a, an intro to Maya 2023 earlier this year that I consider to be a really good one. Actually, it's a very complete guy. We do like a little bit of an animation there with a little robot and stuff. So if you want to take a look, uh, remember that we do have our Skillshare. I'm not going to play the, the promo video right now, but remember that we do have the Skillshare um, promotion. So you can go here in the description and check it out. Now, freelance, this is important. If you're going to be freelancing and you want to save costs, Again, it depends on what kind of things you're going to be freelancing in. But if you're going to be doing modeling, texturing, and stuff like that, then here's where I would say Blender comes into play. And it's an excellent choice. I, I will give it like five stars here on the, on the freelance department because there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of plugins that can help you. There is a lot of, um, again, support and stuff. And it's free, which is great because as a freelance, uh, costs can definitely like pile up, especially if you're 
uh, subscribe to a lot of different softwares. I can give you an example. In my case, I pay every month, I pay my uh, Adobe suit for Photoshop, After Effects, and all that kind of stuff. I pay my Substance uh, suit. I uh, have my full CBrush license. I pay my monthly or like my yearly Maya license. Uh, and then depending on whether I'm using Speedtree or Marvel's Designer and stuff like that, I will pay for those monthly. So as you can see, it's, it's quite a big of money uh, when I when I start having all of my things. I also have like a GitHub account and a lot of, a lot of crazy things. So it can pile up and having a free software that can do a lot of stuff, it's really, really important. And again, usually, or, or something that you might not be aware of, usually when you're freelancing, your client will ask something very specific. So uh, I'm going to show you a, an example right now. Uh, I had a client that um, asked me to do a, a jewelry piece. A, a, another client of hers wanted to honor a dog that passed away uh, that was very uh, beloved by their family, and they wanted to create like a neck a necklace uh, charm, right? Um, and they gave me a photo, and uh, this is it. So I did this little guy right here. Now, I did do it inside of ZBrush. I, I used uh, ZBrush. It took me a couple of hours, probably like a day to, to finish it up and um, with changes and stuff. And, uh, and they were happy with it. Now, could you something? Could you do something like this inside of Blender? Yes, absolutely. You could definitely create something like this inside of Blender and you would save yourself the license from ZBrush, which is $800, right? So for that, those kind of jobs, if you're going to be the guy that people are going to be going to and you're going to be providing services, then being able to provide those services without additional cost to you is, I believe, very, very important. Um, and the last one, which is uh, an area that I know not a lot of people will go into, but since I've been in this area, I am in this area, I can, I can, like it, I, can <laughs> I can definitely explain to you why it's so important for us and, and for my um, my business to, to use Blender nowadays. I have five artists right now, five artists working with me on Hyperlab, which is the, the company that we're doing to uh, create like VR stuff and AR experiences and stuff like that. Imagine having to pay one license of Maya for each of those artists, which by the way, I trained those artists. They were, they were former students of mine. So I trained those artists and now that they're my um, employees, uh, I need to provide the, the computers for them and everything for them so that they can just come to work, do the work and then leave happy, right? With their pay and everything. So imagine having to pay another 400 or in this case, in, in Mexico's 4,000 pesos, $300. Uh, let's say it's $300. Imagine having to pay $300 for each artist every year. That's a big bunch of cash that I would rather have uh, like buying better computers or getting them tablets and stuff like that, right? So, so Blender becomes a really good option for us because as long as they can develop and create the things that were required, then we're perfectly fine. And we're our own studio. So, so there's no one that's going to come to us and say, hey, you're doing things wrong. Who cares how we're doing things? As long as the product is there and the client is happy with it, it really doesn't matter about the tool. We've, I've said this before about a lot of times, like the tool that you use for your creation really doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm going to give you another example. There's uh, I've seen a lot of people recommending this. Uh, there's this Forger app, Forger Sculpt. So Forger is a... Um, it's an app that you can download. I'm not sure if it's for desktop or for iPad. I think I'm pretty sure it's for iPad. Um, and uh, it's quite inexpensive. I think it's like $10 or $20 or something like that. I don't remember the exact price. I did download for my iPad and it was working fine. And I've seen people do amazing stuff, like really, really, really cool models with this one. So if I'm looking for a, a sculpting address to create like high poly uh, meshes, I wouldn't mind, like I personally, again, as a small studio, as a small company, I don't care where you create your stuff. As long as you can deliver this sort of quality to me and I can then get it into our pipeline, do the retopology, texture it and everything else, it really doesn't matter as much, okay? I'm gonna give you another example. Um, there's this guy, so I'm not sure if you guys know about them. We talked about them in 3D printing. Uh, Artisan Guild, they do um, a Patreon for Dungeons and Dragons, which is a game I play. And uh, and every month, this guys release uh, a series of uh, little miniatures. Now, do they need to care about retopology? No. Do they need to care about UVs? No. Do they need to care about rigging and stuff like that? No. They just sculpt cool stuff inside of Seabrush and then send it to us so that we can print them and, and play with them. Um, and that's the that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of businesses out there that are not necessarily the traditional like game, commercial, movie, entertainment businesses where 3D softwares are really important. These guys make their living through this uh, through these models, through selling these models through Patreon, through Patreon, right? So 
if they could do these models in Blender, I can guarantee you they would do them just to save the license on, on Sivers. Now, they probably already own the, the full license, right? Uh, and yes, there's, of course, better things instead of Sivers than Blender. That's a whole different topic. But my point is, if you're trying to create a new business, if you're trying to do something new and you want to save costs, then again, Blender is an excellent option. There's other software such as Cinema 4D, which for motion graphics is really good. There's things like... Um, well, I mean, you can use, of course, the big, the big three everywhere, right? But again, that's where I, why I will put Blender there as a, as another, as another big option. Okay. So again, my best advice: if you guys are looking for a job and you want to work at a big studio, then yes, definitely learn one of the uh, like suits or one of the three packages that are being used on the studios. It's imperative. You cannot, it's not going to be as easy for you to get a job if you don't know, for instance, Maya. Okay. Another big tip that I can give you about that, because um, there was someone in the comments that mentioned that like CD Project Rack and stuff like that, that they are looking for people. If you look for, um, I don't know, I'm going to look for a random one, Riot Games 3D Jobs. So if we look here at the 3D and we look for like this one, character art intro, as you can see right here, the responsibilities, this is what you're like required to do. And then over here, this is where they're probably gonna be asking for the specific uh, industries. There we go. So industry standard 3D modeling and texturing tools, ZBrush, again, so it's a must have. Maya, Photoshop, Suspend Painter, and 3D Code. Okay, preferred, as you can see, it says preferred. And this is a very important distinction because in every single company, I can guarantee you that if you have a kick-ass portfolio, they will take a, a shot at you. Like they will at least get like an interview and talk to you to know like what's going on, why you choose that specific project. But just to give you an example, if someone came to me and they're like, hey, I'm a three modeler, but I model my stuff in like Google SketchUp. I was like, really? Google SketchUp? That's like for architecture and stuff. Yeah, but I, I've just been doing that. And they show me like a kick-ass guns and, and robots and stuff. I'm like, can you export that as an FBX? Yes. Okay, let's give it a shot. Maybe we will need you for a specific project, and that's it. I would probably encourage them to work on the on learning the other softwares, just because it's easier to help. The main reason why why this kind of industries or the studios want you to use specific softwares is because they do have like pipelines and specific things set up for those softwares, and that's why it's important. But the bigger the studio, the more specific they're gonna go. The smaller the studio. In my experience, the more flexibility there's going to be in them being able to choose a different uh, a different software. Um, and that's it. I think that's all I wanted to say about that topic, my friends. Again, I know that the today and yesterday were uh, a little bit different. Now I'm not going to consider them weird. It's going to be different. Uh, the one thing I am going to give you another like last piece of advice, do not try to master all of them. That will be like suicide. Like uh, someone in the comments was asking right here is like, hey, what about Houdini? I, I could start learning Houdini, but I, I, like I already know Maya, I already know Blender, I don't know ZBrush. Uh, so trying to learn one more thing that it's not really gonna add, maybe just a couple tools here and there. That's not that's not really ideal. It, it would be better for me to just specialize on the ones that I know, so that I can have a better portfolio and uh, get get better jobs. Okay. So uh, just to wrap things up, uh, just remember that uh, this is like my personal opinion. This should be an opinion, but you're free to comment uh, down here and, and we can just bounce ideas back. If you're going for a big studio, definitely focus on the on the studio ready portfolios. Uh, if you're going freelance or an entrepreneur, evaluate whether or not you want to invest on licenses or you want to keep it like as open source as possible uh, because that's always an option. And there's one more thing I forgot to say because there's another group of people that we sometimes don't consider and they're important as well for industry and those are the hobbyists. There's a lot of people out there that just want to learn this because it's fun, right? Like a lot of us do it for a job. We want a paycheck and, and everything, but there's a lot of people that just want to learn about 3D and sculpting digitally and stuff like that because it's fun. And again, that's where Blender comes into play because it's a great starting point for someone that just get, wants to get to know what's what's this all about. Then if they really like it and they're really good and they want to pursue a career, that's when we start like thinking about other things. And as we've mentioned before, this is gonna be my closing statement. It never hurts to learn more tools so that you can be more flexible in your job. Be a specialist, grab something that you're really, really good at, get be, become the best there, and then start seeing everywhere. Don't don't just like um, I I, um, I say it in Spanish is don't don't get married to one specific software because Maya could die in the next couple of years if all of this starts doing like horrible stuff, right? And everyone's gonna have to change um, like softwares and stuff. So you need to be ready and you need to learn a lot of the fundamentals and stuff like that to be a great great artist. 
And uh, that's it, guys. I think that's pretty much it. Make sure to check down here uh, below to um, for the what's the word for the portfolio link. We're gonna have a portfolio review next weekend. I'm probably not gonna be able to see you guys tomorrow, uh, but I'll be back on Monday with the continuation of the shield. We're gonna be working on the shield, and there's a couple more surprises that I wanna be working on. So uh, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.